The long-awaited video is finally here. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make your Tycoon Rebirth, where all of your progress will be reset, all of your money will be reset, but you'll get a new and fresh money multiplier to increase the money you get per drop. Now, Rebirth adds a lot of replayability for your, in your game for a lot less scripting and work so it's a great feature for any tycoon so stay tuned to learn about rebirth if you enjoy this video make sure to like it subscribe to my channel for more tycoon content and for more roblox scripting content but without further ado let's jump right into the video So let's get started with making our rebirth. So what I want to do for my specific tycoon is make a button where you can press on it like any normal button and it'll just allow you to rebirth which will give you a money multiplier in the next run so you'll get more money per drop. Now you can change it to whatever you want because the system we'll be making will be more, more or less expandable. So let's get started. I'm going to go into server storage take my template out of server storage into the workspace so I can work on it. And I want the rebirth button to be like the last one to be unlocked. So right now our like last button is like the uh, test part button. So I'm just going to take this button here. I selected it by holding alt and then clicking on it. And I'm going to use control D to duplicate it. Then I'm going to drag it off to the side and change some of the attributes. Oh, whoops. There you go. So I want the I want to add an unlock ID. So I'm going to make this unlockable in the tag editor by clicking the check arrow here. And then I'm going to add an attribute that says unlock ID. And the unlock ID will be the actual ID of the button that we just copied. So I'm going to take this, just cut it and paste it there. And then for the actual ID, I'm just going to do rebirth. And then for the display, I'm going to do rebirth as well as for the cost i'm just going to set it something like 25 you can obviously adjust that to balance your game when you want it so now i'm going to go into our tycoon script actually first of all let's move our template back into server storage before we forget it's very important nothing will work if you leave it in the workspace and then i'm going to go to the tycoon and scroll all the way down just to a new area I'm going to make a function called tycoon wait for rebirth. Now, you may be thinking, why is this not a component? So, when I was demoing out this feature, I went through and I made it a component, and I realized this function, the component, will need to access a lot of aspects of our tycoon. It'll need to ac access this private spawn, and it'll need to access a bunch of those more or less tycoon specific functions and variables and there's only ever going to be one rebirth button really i don't really see a use case where they be multiple so in this case i thought it'd be okay to put the button functionality in the tycoon itself because we're not going to make multiple it's not going to be as expandable as the other portions of our tycoon and it just has to access a bunch of stuff that really the only the tycoon should be able to access. It'd be kind of confusing if the component were to dabble with some things and you just didn't know about it and the tycoon got kind of confused. So that's why I have it here. It's one of those decisions where there's not no really right answer, but this is just what I chose. So now we're going to have to set up our uh, subscribe. So we're going to do self-subscribe topic. The... We're going to subscribe to the button topic and then function ID. So we need to make sure if the ID equals rebirth, then we can do a rebirth. So this is similar to what the button component does, which is nice. But now we have to reference the spawn point of the tycoon, which will be self underscore spawn. And what I want to do is I want to basically destroy the player's tycoon and then remake it from scratch because when you rebirth you're basically going to reset all of your progress right so 
instead of trying to manually go back and lock everything back up and reset it, we're just going to destroy it and recreate it. So that will help you, especially if there's something bugged in the Tycoon by accident or something. It'll just make everything have a clean slate from scratch, which is nice. So we're also going to reference the owner, which will be self.owner. And then what we want to do is for now we can just say player manager dot set money to set money of the owner to zero. So we're going to reset the player's money because they're going to rebirth. They're going to start from scratch. And then we're going to call self destroy. So we're going to self destruct our tycoon. And then since this function is still running, don't keep in mind that when we destroy it, all we're doing is destroying the model, destroying the event and setting it to unoccupied. But then we're going to instantly reoccupy it by saying local tycoon, or tyke, I guess, equals tycoon.new owner, and then we're going to send in this same exact spawn point. And we're going to just say tyke init. So we're going to initialize the new tycoon, and everything should be back to normal. But one other thing we have to do is clear the unlock IDs of the player because we don't want the new tycoon to have all the progress at the old one. We want them to completely reset. We do not have the functionality for that in our player manager yet, so let's go to our player manager and we can scroll down to let's just scroll down to the unlock ID area and we can do function player manager dot clear unlock IDs. And we're gonna take in the player that we want it to clear. And then all we have to do is say local data equals session data player dot user ID. And then we can say table dot clear data dot unlock IDs. So what table dot clear does is it just removes all the values in a table. And we have a table of unlock IDs that we started off with here that we can just clear. And what will happen is when the player leaves the game, it will save their current unlock ID. So if they rebirth and they leave, it'll save it in this state since we're just saving it to session data. So we don't have to immediately save it to the data store. We can just let our entire data store system handle it as time goes on, which is exactly what we want. It's nice and modular and reusable. But this also, we also have another issue. Now, since we need to add a multiplier, we can't really use the game pass multiplier that we had that we made in the last video or two videos ago I believe because the way that one works is we just set a money multiplier attribute each time they join if they have the game pass and that's a very robust system because even if they buy the game game pass and they don't and something messes up when they rejoin the game Roblox has very has much better data storage than our system. It'll be okay. So we're going to need to design a different saving system for this situation. So initially, that might seem pretty easy. We go up all the way to the onPlayerAdded function, and we just add another line here underneath unlock IDs that has a multiplier. And this multiplier will increase every time the player rebirths. But there's an issue. What about the players who have already joined the game with money and unlock IDs? They won't have this multiplier variable in their little table because we have it right here. So we could just have an if statement say, hey, if data doesn't have multiplier, we add multiplier. But that's not really expandable. What if we want to add more things to save? That's where a really handy function that we can make comes into play. So I'm going to go up to the top of our script. And we're going to make a function called local function reconcile. And it'll take in a source table, source table, and a template table. There we go. So, what we can do here is we can just say 4k v in pairs template do. And we can say if not source k, then source k equals v. So we're going to run through the template table and we're going to put all of the values in the template table that are not in the source table into the source table. So it'll basically compare our template to our source, whatever the source doesn't have from the template, it'll be injected in. 
but this function importantly is shallow meaning that it doesn't do anything for the sub tables which in our case is perfectly fine if you have nested tables with data in them then you'll have to change that but for our case it'll work just fine so now we have to kind of restructure this equals block right here it'll be pretty simple though all we got to do is let's just delete this we can just say session data user player dot user id equals reconcile and then our source table will be a little interesting we're going to say if success then data else a blank table and then we're going to put the money equals zero unlock ids equals a blank table and then the multiplier equals one because anything multiplied by one is itself according to the, like the identity property and when we rebirth we'll probably increase this by like 0.25 each time so what we're doing here is this may seem a little confusing so let's just focus on this first argument here. So this is a um, a little block that basically says if success, so if we have a successful data, then we just you return the data table, else we have a normal table. If you don't know, this is just a new uh, feature in Luau that allows you to do an inline like comparison expression that returns a value. And what happens is we reconcile this with our template table, which has everything here. So if they already have data, it'll populate their data table with anything they don't have. And if they have no data, this entire source table will be replicated into a blank table, which is exactly what we want. So now let's add some little infrastructure for our multiplier function. Let's go down. Let's just go down to the money area. We can just say create a function player manager dot add multiplier I'll take in the player and the multiplier that we wish to add and then we can just say session data player dot user ID dot multiplier times equals multiplier so we're taking the multiplier we're multiplying it by itself or we're taking the multiplier, we're multiplying it by the new multiplier. So, for example, if we want to add a 1.25 multiplier, so you get 25% more money, you will just call this function with 1.25 here, it'll multiply it by itself, and it'll stack on top of other multipliers, because all the multipliers <coughs> will get multiplied, will get multiplied by themselves. That's a, that's a mouthful. So now, we have to just do the get block as well, so player manager dot get multiplier which is pretty straightforward we take the player we return the session data player dot user id and then dot multiplier and this will be used similarly to our game pass multiplier that we made a little earlier so now we can go back to our tycoon revisit our wait for rebirth function we can add our player manager dot clear unlock IDs and we send in the owner as the player and then also we can add the function to give the player more multiplier by saying player manager add multiplier owner and then 1.25 you can change this to whatever you want but it has to be greater than one for the player to get a positive multiplier and honestly, I'm going to put this below the tycoon in it. Just so the tycoon has to be initialized before the multiplier is added. But honestly, I don't think it really matters. But we need to actually call this function. So let's go up all the way to our tycoon in it. And then just wherever, we can just say self wait for rebirth. So it'll call the function, call the wait for reader function, which will wait until the button's pressed, set all these things in motion, and we'll be set to go. So let's just test it out now. We're still not fully done. We can still test it out, though. There's an issue. So there's a slight issue, and that's just a really simple one that I just forgot. 
In our reconcile function of the player manager, we have to return the source table again. Even though we are just mutating it, we need to return it because down here we're setting it equal to something. And if it returns nothing, it'll be setting session data player.userid equal to nil. We don't want that. We want to set it to this newly reconciled function. So now let's just try it again. Here we go. And I'm going to get my basic dropper and upgrader. Why not? Let's get let's get tons of money. There we go. And we should be able to get our rebirth. And then you can see it resets our tycoon, which is perfect. So now the last thing we need to do is go into our collector and our components. Go to the collector. And honestly, all we have to do is... Do we have the player manager? We do not. So we need to first get the player manager. So we'll say local player manager equals require script dot parent dot parent dot player manager. There we go. And then all we have to do is I'm just going to say local rebirth multiplier equals self or equals player manager dot get multiplier from the self dot tycoon dot owner. There we go. And then we have to multiply our normal game pass multiplier by the rebirth multiplier. There we go. So in reality, we probably should combine these two multiplier systems. As I said earlier, for our data saving solution now, it'd just be better to make our game pass multiplier a little bit more reliable. If you're using a more advanced data store library, you would want to combine these for sure. But since we're just doing this and our data store system is more of a learning experience than anything else, that's just what we're doing. But if you are making this a full production game, I would encourage you to use one of the more established data store libraries like profile servers or something like that. So let's test this again. Let's get our basic part. And we can get our rebirth. And so if I get the copper dropper, which I think should give me five by default. Or I guess since... So what's happening is we get the two times bonus from the game pass and we get the 0.25 bonus and that's why there's these uh, decimals coming up which means it works which is cool so now our rebirth is successful and we have tons of more money and it adds some replayability to your tycoon and that's about it for this video hope you enjoyed this is a long awaited video <laughs> everyone's been wanting the rebirth video so if you have any questions or suggestions Put them down below in the comments. Subscribe to my channel for more Tycoon and Roblox scripting content. Like the video if you enjoyed it. And with that, I hope you have a nice day and goodbye.